Alright, what's up you two? Welcome to this uh, new episode on EU4. Um, this is a 1.23.3, 28.3, sorry. This is slightly important for one thing uh, that we did along the way. Um, but yeah, uh, Roman Empire, guys, uh, we formed it as Brandenburg. Uh, we'll show how we got there. Uh, just to show, though, that this is the minimal stuff, well, besides Germany, obviously, but in terms of the stuff we need, like, for example, we didn't go anywhere in Great Britain, with the exception, well, I did date the whole states here. Um, as you can see, I just did that. Uh, Fez here. Tunis will go through what is required for the Roman Empire, even though it's like the 10 to 1 I upload on YouTube so far. Uh, Lithuania is my march where I like to Scandinavia. Anyways, let's get into it. Timeline, guys. Time lapse, time lapse, time lapse. So we start as Brandenburg. One big thing that happened as soon as I. I'll stop right here. So for those who played Brandenburg a few times, will know that if uh, for Teutonic Order starts with Newmark. But then you get an event eventually that no, the Teutonic Order will sell you Newmark for 100 ducats. It can take a while, and because now Teutonic Order is extremely on a timer due to the event for Denzi, it might just not happen. Um, but in this game it happened as soon as I unpause on the, well, I guess the 12th of November 1444, so pretty lucky. The reason it's pretty lucky is because missions. Um, Brandenburg gets a mission to get Newmark, which gives them permanent claims on Pomerania. And once you get Pomerania, either you are a subject, then you get permanent claims on Teutonic Quarter. Uh, so by doing that, uh, we completed the mission for Newmark, gave us the mission for Pomerania. So on the 11th of December, we were able to attack Pomerania, who had no allies. Didn't have time to get allies, because we got those missions super fast. And then we vassalized Pomerania, giving us our claims on the Teutonic Order super quickly, way before the event for Danzig happened, for those who don't know, Poland, well, it's for Poland, but it's Teutonic Order that gets the events. So Danzig and Tuchel at the start starts with um, Bergers, the merchants having those two provinces. As long as they have it, an event can happen in the Teutonic Order that will trigger the Prussian Confederation Confederacy that automatically releases Danzig as um, a f uh, an independent nation and it will f well basically you can refuse but generally speaking the AI will decide to attack them the problem is at the same time as they get released Poland gets an event to guarantee them which usually means that the Tonic Order gets wrecked once they lose then they usually take land here once they um, once then they wins I guess uh, Poland will get an event to vassalize Danzig automatically by event. Get Kolm uh, as a free core. This one. Uh, and yeah, that's it. But if the Tunic Order doesn't own Danzig, the event cannot happen. So because we got Newmark super fast, therefore going into Pomerania super fast, therefore getting our permanent claims on all of the Tunic Order pretty fast. Uh, we were able to get there way before the Prussian Confederacy event happened. So, this is what happened. Now, I did take Stolp, because this, this is the old strategy. And like, while you're fighting Pomerania, claim on the Teutonic Quarter. So, when you finish, just take Stolp and go for it. But I did kind of forget that the number Brandenburg gets missions for the Teutonic Quarter. So, this is not required. We could leave it at Pomerania. So, you save a bit of admin here and a bit of aggressive expansion. Slight mistake here, but it's not a big deal. So we took Danzig here. Poland took this. This is important. I'm not sure when it's going to happen. Now we're just going to expand here a bit. Nothing relevant, really. The basic stuff. As, like, space, as this, things let's... Um, it depends on alliances and all that. So this can be different, everyone. We're going for Mecklenburg, but Lubeck went there first. We'll eventually vassalize... Brunswick, I think we already have it. We next Pomerania already. But the big thing was gonna happen when we fought Pomer uh, Poland. This. So how does this happen? So we attacked. While we were fighting for Danzig, Poland went in for the Teutonic Order. That's why they had all of this, right? Now what happened is that it left the Teutonic Order with only two provinces. Um, 
and the Livonian Order was guaranteeing them, though they didn't respect the guarantee when we attacked. The point is, uh, Poland had a truce that was ending one year after our truce, so when we attacked, we had time to start sieging, um, but I sat on it for a long time. Uh, basically enough troops here to make sure that I have the siege if anyone else comes to siege it, but not finishing the siege. The reason is, this was the war goal, so if I sieged it, and their capital too, so if I sieged it, we would have a lot of war score forcing us with a call for peace to peace out eventually. But if you don't have 50 war score in a war, you don't get a call for peace. So we didn't want the war goal. The reason was that eventually Poland would go for it, because they have missions for it, and this is what happened. Eventually, it took a little while, but eventually they attacked, and the reason we wanted them to attack is because since we are in the capital, we are we were able to vassalize them in the war. Because we vassalize them, and Poland is attacking them, it forces them in the war, in the defensive war against us, because now we become the leader in their war. But guess what? We are in the Ashari, which let us call in Austria as the emperor. Who ended, ended up calling Hungary, while well, all his allies basically... It, Poland was fighting half of Europe at that point. So that was an easy war, I didn't do nothing anyways. So we did take this, we took it ourselves, because it was not a reconquest. So it was the same course expansion to give it to them or get, take it for us. But at least we had permanent claims here. And then we took this as well. So here we go. So Poland is already get, getting wrecked. Follow the colors, not the borders. Now the rest here is going to be basically basics, really. We next pro runs a week. We go extra. We go a lot on subjects uh, because well, everybody's took stuff and then lost stuff, so there's cores everywhere. So Hesse is ours. Saxony disappeared if you saw it for five seconds, but then the emperor just forced everything to be released. But Hesse is our subject at this point. Uh, we are allied to Burgundy, hoping for an inheritance, but it's not going to happen. Clevis is our vassal as well. Get rid of Teutonic the Order. We're going to vassalize everyone in order and reconquest this eventually. We're going to vassalize Riga as well, all this diplomatically. So this is the big thing. Um, we took diplomatic first for that reason. Makes it easier to diplo vassalize, makes it, which is removing a lot of vigorous expansion. From Prussia pretty early, basically as the tech on time with tech. Um, at this point, we're basically just the, the, the power here, we're still allied to Austria. But that's not gonna last. Um, yeah, at this point, we're just pushing for whatever is available. We're focusing hard on whatever we'll need for um, Germany. We'll get the land. I think we have the land on this one. No, we don't have it yet. But we'll have the land like 50, 60 years before we can do Ger form Germany because Germany requires tech 20. Now the big thing about that as I said at the start of the video, 28.3 made a, a, a change that is quite important here. It's not exactly relevant because Germany doesn't give you anything special except, well, burning claims on all of Germany, so South and North Germany, so depending on what you got when you got there could be useful but we had basically all of Germany already but the point is um sin my cat is sorry in the past well there's the Prussian monarchy right um in the past when you formed Germany you would lose the Prussian monarchy but you don't anymore since 28.3 and that's a big thing uh again it's not exactly big because Germany doesn't do much. Germany actually forces you to leave the empire. Well, there's that, but there was nothing left of the empire when we left anyways. So, yeah. Eventually we'll be allied to France for a long time. Almost. Um, inherited them as a PU. Big thing is we're allied to France and Russia, which enables us to go super hard on Germany. We'll have all of the Germans pissed off, eventually Spain and Great Britain will join a coalition. We had two coalitions for triggered on us, we won them both super easy because Prussian troops, you know? Um, so yeah, just again, follow the color, not the borders. Because the borders are the end. As you can see, I have land here. But as if you follow the border at the end, that was given by Lithuania. This is the Lithuanian border, because 
eventually I just decided to give stuff to Lithuania to um, save on cultures and states because eventually I reached a point where I was getting corruption for territories so I preferred giving them those, those small states and just state better stuff in Italy and Germany. Uh, Austria is about to go soon enough. Funny thing is, when we'll take this from the Ottomans, the German stuff here, that's Ming that called us in a war against the Ottomans and promised us land. That was a funny one. So yeah, we're just uh, proceeding again. I'll repeat it multiple times in every single run I make. Um, the big thing about dealing with aggressive expansion, it's not to spread it across the map to keep everybody under 50, but it's to focus it on a few nation that will go to 400, 500, 600, doesn't matter. As long as you are sure, and that depends on your confidence, um, as long as you're sure that you can handle them, focus your, your ally, the big ones that you're not going to attack yet, so France and Russia. I didn't want anything in Russia, I wanted France eventually, but I, it, I had other things to do. The big, the reason to ally is that as long as they are allies, they're not going to form a coalition against you, and they take away a less aggressive expansion. So you're limiting aggressive expansion this way, and second, by focusing aggressive expansion on a few nations that you know you can handle, then you're guaranteed to handle the coalition, and then you just keep killing them. So, for example, Burgundy 1, I killed them at like 600 degrees expansion. That's 600 degrees expansion that's gone off the map. It would have required me like 12, 13 nations to spread it properly to have a coalition instead. So that's safer like that. That's the best way as far as I'm concerned. This is Germany. That's the best way as far as I'm concerned to deal with aggressive expansion. And so eventually we had no aggressive expansion left because all of the Germans and these guys were gone. So we'll start going in Italy. Great Britain will start being an annoyance by guaranteeing everything we touch. Um, also, you had like 250 heavies by the end. So we're gonna get hard on Spain, kick him out of Italy first. So yeah, we got this. Again, when this got away from the Ottomans, it's the Ming that we were allied to Ming and they called us. That was funny. So Burgundy is gone, Brittany is gone. I'm gonna start pushing here, kick out Spain almost from Italy. I didn't want to go over 100 yet. You can remove uh, Venice. So at this point, there's only Spain and Great Britain that's left that has a cross expansion, and they're not enough, so we're not getting coalitions anymore. So we're gonna abuse France. So we're starting flying states here. So kicked out the Ottomans out of the Balkans. All right, we're getting pretty fast at this point. We got the provinces we needed from Portugal, kicked them out of here. Important thing, we need those because this is Iberia. Uh, focus on the Ottomans in Spain. But eventually we'll get, get rid of France because, um, well, we're running out of stuff to attack. So here we go, France. That's a client state again, client state here. This guy will disappear soon, there we go. We're nexting this guy at this point. So yeah, Great Britain, before we got here, Great Britain was guaranteeing France, Spain, the Ottomans. You know, just everything I needed, so I just attacked Great Britain directly, took these, because you need York and London, and just forced them to remove all the guarantees. And then just a race against time, really. We're about to finish. So we're breaking truces at this point, nobody cares. Annexing this guy and finishing Spain. And there we go, 1768. It's not the quickest Roman Empire I've formed, like there's quicker ones on my channel, uh, but it's the quickest one from a small nation that's under 50 development at the start, doesn't have very really good missions, is not in the proper area. So yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, so just a recap for those who wonder what you need to form a Roman Empire first, you need to be either Christian or Pagan. Any Christian or Pagan nations can form it. And you need all of Iberia, again. This is Iberia, so don't forget this. You need all of France, France is straightforward. All of Italy, this is straightforward as well. All of the Balkans, now the Balkans, this is the Balkans as well. Anatolia, Cyprus is in Anatolia. The Mishrik. Let's just get out of this. 
The Mershrik is all down here with Iraq, down to Palestine. And then there's a few specific provinces that you need, which is Fez. You don't need these two, but like unless you take it in the last age, you'll need these to core Fez anyways. So we took these. Um, you need Tunis, just the province. You need Cairo. Again, we pushed it a bit, pushed in a bit more just to be able to core it. You need Zealand. This we got pretty early, so whatever. And then you need London. And York against York. That's funny, this one was renamed, but not these. Okay. So yeah, that's all you need. Um, if you want to keep playing as Roman Empire, keep in mind that when you form a Roman Empire, you're forced into another culture, which will change your main culture. So only your main culture, so in our case it's crap. And it's in a lost culture group, which has nothing in it that is in the game. These are cultures that existed before this timeline, like Roman. So, yeah, it's a pretty bad thing, because you lose your cultural union, basically. So you have a bunch of Germans here. So this is bad, unless you culture converted a lot, because it converts all your main culture. So this is Prussians. So yeah, there you go, guys. Um, there's going to be the full run put in the highlights of 45 to 1 hour. 45 minutes to 1 hour. It's going to take me a few days to highlight it properly. Uh, but I wanted to give you that. Uh, for those who watched it here and there on YouTube, this is a full run. Well, the time lasts of the full run. We're not going to finish it. We're going to start something new in the next run. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.